Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to beautiful Buffalo, New York, and to the commissioning ceremony of USS Little Rock. I am Commander Leonard Mitchell, the ship's executive officer. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to extend our sincere thanks for joining us here today. Before our ceremony begins, I would ask you to please silence your cell phones for the duration of the ceremony. Thank you. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Little Rock, the second ship to bear the name of Arkansas's capital city. The first Little Rock was one of 27 Cleveland-class light cruisers. She was completed shortly after World War II and one of six to be converted to guided missile cruisers. She was commissioned in 1944, just prior to the end of World War II. After an initial South American cruise, she spent the next few years serving off the east coast of the United States, the Caribbean, and in the Mediterranean. She was retired after the war, becoming part of the Atlantic Reserve Fleet in 1949. In the 1950s, she was converted to a Galveston-class guided missile cruiser. She was recommissioned as a flagship in 1960 as CLG-4, and in 1975, redesignated as CG-4. In her new career, she served extensively in the Mediterranean. She decommissioned for the last time in 1976, and today she rests here in Buffalo as the centerpiece of the Buffalo and Erie County Navy and Military Park, where she is toured by more than 100,000 vis visitors each year from over 100 countries. The ship before you is the fifth Freedom Variant littoral combat ship and was christened on July 18, 2015 at Marinette Marine Corporation in Marinette, Wisconsin. Today she is complete, and we are proud to serve in the newest warship in the United States Navy. This ship's, this ship's crews are honored to carry the city of Little Rock's proud name as we defend the American way of life whenever and wherever we may be called. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first ship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hull to full, fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready. In just a few moments, the United States Navy Band Northeast will render honors to the Honorable John Bozeman, United States Senator, State of Arkansas. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party. Honors, presentation of colors, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Captain David Glassmeyer, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Mr. Mo Nalon, Chairman, Little Rock Commissioning Committee, City of Buffalo. The Honorable Tom Prince, Chairman, Little Rock Commissioning Committee, City of Little Rock. Commander Joshua Fields, United States Navy, Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Bath, Detachment Marinette. Captain Michael E. Taylor, United States Navy, Program Manager, Littoral Combat Ships. Captain Sean Johnston, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship, Squadron 2. Mr. Francesco Valente, President and CEO, Fincantieri Marine Group. Mr. Joe DiPietro, Vice President, Small Combatants and Ship Systems, Lockheed Martin Integrated Warfare Systems and Sensors. Rear Admiral John Nagley, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer for Littoral Combat Ships. Ms. Gloria Valdez, 
Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Ships. The Honorable Mark Stodola, Mayor, City of Little Rock, Arkansas. The Honorable Byron W. Brown, Mayor, City of Buffalo, New York. Vice Admiral Luke McCollum, United States Navy, Chief of Navy Reserve. The Honorable Kathleen Hochul, Lieutenant Governor, State of New York. The Honorable Brian Higgins, United States Representative, 26th District, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Mrs. Janae Bonner, escorted today by Command Master Chief Joseph Reynolds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable John Bozeman, United States Senator, Arkansas, escorted today by our commanding officer, Commander Todd D. Peters, United States Navy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors for the Honorable John Bozeman. Platform. <laughs> Form. Ready? Two. Advance the colors.
Retire the colors. We'd like to thank the Western New York Maritime Charter School, Naval JRTC Unit Color Guard, and the United States Navy Band Northeast for their support today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Glassmeyer will now deliver the invocation. And here we have it. Join me now in prayer. Eternal Father, we gather in the city of lights, the city of good neighbors, the city of Buffalo, steeped in naval tradition from the Battle of Lake Erie to the creation of the Erie Canal. It was during this battle that Oliver Hazard Perry uttered the words, don't give up the ship and we have met the enemy, and they are ours. Today we add a new phrase, back with a vengeance. We come here this morning to commission and present this warship, the USS Little Rock, to the nation for service, defending the arsenal of democracy. She represents the collective efforts of thousands of people pursuing their vocation as stewards of your gifts. We invoke your blessing upon the men and women of Lockheed Martin-led LCS team, Fincantieri Marine Group, the Naval Architects Gibbs and Cox, and more than 800 suppliers in 42 states. We thank you for their efforts. They now await an accounting of their efforts as this ship comes alive and is put to the test of service to the fleet. Bless this ship and the generations of sea service personnel who will serve in her. We are grateful today for the presence of the ship's sponsor, Miss Janae Bonner. We pray that this ship and her blue and gold crew who will be the first to take her to sea and those who follow will live up to the highest standards of our Navy. May the USS Little Rockers and her crew become and embody the values of honor, courage, and commitment. And may we who serve, along those imbued with the sacred public trust, always engage this ship in the pursuit of honorable and lasting peace and preserve the tranquility of all nations. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Glassmar. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kathleen Hockel. Welcome. I am so delighted to be here today. The day has finally arrived. We've been waiting for this for years. And on behalf of the governor of the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo, and the people of our great state, we could not be more overjoyed to finally have this day arrive. I hope no one promised you warm weather, but I can promise you you are greeted with warm hearts, steeped in friendship, and a sense of history for forever going this day forward, we are bound together. The state of New York, the state of Arkansas, the city of Buffalo, the city of Lady Little Rock, in a deep appreciation for the men and women of our military. And we are so honored to be able to have this occur, this hallowed ceremony in our midst. And it was referenced that the first commissioning occurred two months after 
our Navy was born. It was December of 1775, and I would like to point out that first commissioning also co occurred in December. So it is not at odds with our great history. It was a December in Philadelphia, and we are forever linked to them. I will make a couple of observations very quickly, and I want to send my regards to the entire platform committee, the many elected officials, the men and women here. During my time as a member of the House of Representatives on the Armed Services Committee, we often spoke about the military of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the future has arrived. We are witnessing the future of our military, which is leaner, smarter, more technologically advanced than ever before. And so it is with great pride again that I welcome you, give you thanks for joining us in this momentous occasion. And with our gratitude go our prayers, because we know that we sleep under the security blanket every night without a care because of the brave men and women, particularly in our Navy, who will go around the seas of the world to thwart terrorism and enemies wherever they lie. And we will know that that ship goes with the love of the people of Buffalo and the state of New York. And we wish them Godspeed and God bless America. Thank you very much. I will also comment that I have a very long proclamation, which I'm willing to read. If this was occurring in July, I would have been honored to, in deference to all of you. And it looks like a very cold Buffalo Bills game. But I, but I will just simply put this aside and say these are greetings from the governor and the people of the great state of New York. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hochul. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe DiPietro. Well, we've already taken care of the cold joke, so I'll get right into the speech so we can get warmed up soon. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. What a great Navy day, and what a great day for the cities of Little Rock and Buffalo. Before beginning my remarks, I want to pause and recognize all of our United States Navy sailors in attendance today. We would not be here were it not for their steadfast partnership with our industry team has enjoyed with you. Thank you for your service and all you do for your country. I would like to congratulate and thank ship sponsor, Ms. Janae Bonner, Commander Peters, the Little, Croc Little Rock crew, the commissioning committee, and all of the volunteers who worked tirelessly to make today's event a success. It is my privilege today to represent the industry team of Lockheed Martin, Fincantieri Marinette Marine, and Gibson Cox that designed and built the remarkable warship you see behind us. The industry team is invested in the LCS program and this ship. It took over one million man hours to construct the USS Little Rock and I would be remiss to not recognize our team's 12,500 dedicated workers and suppliers, especially the 2,000 plus men and women that work in Marinette Marine. Their hard work over the past four years made it possible to transform raw steel into the capable warship you see today. Today, we have the privilege of commissioning the second warship bearing the name Little Rock, in the shadow of the decommissioned namesake, a first in the 242-year history of our U.S. Navy. The new USS Little Rock is flexible, capable, tough, and resilient surface combatant. She will also be a workhorse, tasking out and carrying out the essential missions of anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and mine countermeasures, along with many other missions that her talented and experienced crews demand of her. With small, while smaller than the original Little Rock, the new USS Little Rock can be rapidly reconfigured and is capable of hauling everything from MH-60 Romeo helicopters to unmanned systems that can operate above and below the sea. A large portion of the ship's capabilities come from the integration of these mission systems, including those of the MH-60 Romeo helicopter built right here in upstate New York. Soon, the USS Little Rock and our crews will be called upon to serve the interests of our United States around the world. And we take great pride 
in knowing that this warship will so capably represent the United States and the great city of Little Rock around the world. Commander Peters, Commander Mitchell, members of the Little Rock crew, on behalf of the LCS industry team, it is our extraordinary honor to be in your presence today and to play a role in supporting your critical missions. The power of this industry team stands behind the Navy and the crews that sail upon these ships. We wish you Godspeed, fair winds, and following seas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DiPietro. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral John Nagley. Well, good morning, Buffalo. What a great Navy day. Is, it, is there a better place to commission a ship than Buffalo, New York? Hey, good morning and welcome. Today we gather to engage in one of our most time-honored naval traditions, the commissioning of a new warship, the future USS Little Rock, LCS-9. Senator Bozeman, Representative Higgins, Admiral McCollum, our esteemed New York and Arkansas state and local officials, Secretary Mavis, Admiral and Mrs. Roughhead, and the great shipbuilders of Fingatary Marinette Marine and our entire Lockheed Martin LCS industry team, welcome and thank you for your continuing support of the Navy. A special note of thanks and appreciation to Mr. Nate Bonner, Little Rock sponsor, for her dedication and support for the crew and their families. I also want to especially thank Little Rock's commissioning committee who have tirelessly planned to this great ceremony today. Your pride, professionalism, and attention to detail is reflected in every aspect of this ceremony. Thank you for the extra effort to make this so very special. You know, shipbuilding has always been part of our nation's history. From the first six frigates to USS Little Rock today, shipbuilding is in our nation's blood. There's no prouder profession or more important work and there's no better shipbuilding team than the team that has constructed this fine ship that sits behind me today. As we gather here today in the shadow of the original USS Little Rock, a ship constructed during World War II, I am struck by anew by the constancy of the naval missions. While separated by more than 70 years of Navy history and technology, these two namesake ships will conduct markedly similar operational missions. As many of you know, the original Little Rock was first a light cruiser, then converted into a guided missile warship, and spent the bulk of her naval career forward deployed. The ship conducted exercises in the Caribbean, the North Sea, with American allies and partner navies, showing the flag operations across Latin America and the Mediterranean, ensuring unfettered access to the world's oceans and waterways, and serving as the Sixth Fleet flagship. Today, we commissioned the newest Little Rock, and while the ship and the technology are vastly different, this Little Rock will share a strong operational connection to her predecessor. LCS ships are in high demand to operate forward. Freedom, Fort Worth, Coronado have all deployed and operated forward in the Southeast Asia AOR, protecting our national interests by building partnerships, ensuring our preeminence to sea control in critical areas of the world. With their high speed shallow draft and flexible modular payloads, LCS has access to far more regions and ports and allows our larger capital ships to operate and do their missions. So although the technology has evolved since the original Little Rock, these two ships will always share a common operational bond based on an enduring naval mission, being forward, closely exercising and operating with allied and partners navies, and ensuring the free flow of global maritime commerce. Forward presence is the foundation of sea control, the foundation of everything we do in the Navy, and it's more important today than ever. So Commander Peters, congratulations to you and your crew as Little Rock officially enters the fleet today. I know you'll bring the legacy of USS Little Rock back with a vengeance as you embark upon many new missions and challenges ahead. And remember, the real combat power from any ship comes from America's best and brightest, the incredible men and women who man and fight her and sail her into harm's way. And I know under your leadership, Little Rock will no doubt make her mark in the fleet. Thank you. Thank you, Rear Armour Nagley. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Gloria Valdez. Thank you to Senator Bozeman, Representative Higgins and Hill, Secretary Mabus, 
Admiral Ruffhead and Mrs. Ruffhead, our sponsor, Janae Bonner, Mayors Brown and Stadola, local government officials, to Commander Peters and the officers and crew of Little Rock, our distinguished guests, and to all of you who have come today to Buffalo to witness the commissioning of this magnificent ship, good morning. As we celebrate today, it is an honor for me to represent the Secretary of the Navy, Richard Spencer, at the commissioning of this great ship, Little Rock. And it is appropriate that we remember and say thank you to the thousands of deployed sailors, Marines, soldiers, and airmen who, along with their families, are sacrificing so much to keep this great nation free. And to all the veterans in this audience today, thank you, too, for your service. I would also like to thank Society of Sponsors President Ellen Ruffhead for your tireless efforts in organizing the distinguished ladies who have taken part in the time-honored tradition of sponsoring naval ships, including the Little Rock. Sponsors play an important and unique role for the Navy. They become a lasting part of each ship's history. While the crew of the ship will change many times over the course of a ship's life, the sponsor remains the same. I would also like to thank the entire Little Rock Commissioning Committee who have worked so hard to arrange this event, which marks the transition of a ship under construction to a powerful fleet asset, ready and equipped to defend our freedoms around the world. And to the men and women of Lockheed Martin, Fink and Terry Marine, Marinette Marine, the supervisor of shipbuilding, and the Navy Program Office, you have labored tirelessly to build this extraordinarily capable ship, and I congratulate you on another job done well. Since the founding of our Navy, many ships have been named for cities and states as a reflection of the greatness of America and the spirit and ingenuity of the American people. Today, we have the great honor to follow in that tradition with the commissioning of Little Rock. As she navigates the seas, the ship we commissioned today will represent America and she will serve as an inspiration around the world. The name Little Rock also represents the people who have called Little Rock and the great state of Arkansas home. Proud Americans who have contributed in many ways to strengthening our Navy and Marine Corps team. Arkansas has a rich history in support of our nation's freedom with 25 Medal of Honor recipients. And Little Rock in particular is the home of Little Rock Air Force Base and the birthplace of General Douglas. Little Rock is a shining example of our nation's drive for excellence and also honors the memory of the ship and crews who proudly served our nation under the namesake Little Rock previously, including Secretary Mabus. Today's commissioning marks the second ship to carry the proud name Little Rock. The first Little Rock, a World War II cruiser, served with distinction until being decommissioned in 1976. And today, as you learn, she lives on as a museum right here in Buffalo. The adaptability, speed, and maneuverability designed into this littoral combat ship will ensure that the newest Little Rock honors her namesake as she empowers our sailors and Marines to protect our great nation. Commander Peters, congratulations to you on your assignment as commanding officer of this fine vessel. Our nation has entrusted you with our finest warship and charged you with preparing your crew for sea. Taking Little Rock around the world, building partnerships, protecting our interests, answering the call, what an awesome task. And I am confident that you and your crew are ready for the challenge. Officers and crew of Little Rock, as you bring your ship to life today, you are also blessed with a wonderful sponsor, Mrs. Janae Bonner. Take heed, serve honorably, and protect the seas. And to all who are present today, we are indeed privileged to witness the introduction of this exceptional ship into our Navy. May God bless her, her crew, her sponsor, and may God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Valdez. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Byron Brown. Today, as we commission the USS Little Rock LCS-9, it is a day of pride and thanks. Uh, we are thankful to the men and women who have served and continue to serve in the US military. We are proud 
of Commander Peters, the command staff and crew of the USS Little Rock, uh, and thankful for them to their service for our country, their service to our nation. This is a time of great transformation in the city of Buffalo as this commissioning takes place. We are experiencing billions of dollars in development in the city, and we are so proud to have this opportunity to be able to show off the progress that is taking place in the city of Buffalo. The area where the former USS Little Rock rests uh, at the Buffalo and Erie County Naval and Military Park is in a growing and dynamic area of the city of Buffalo where literally millions of people visit our community uh, from across the region, uh, the nation, and internationally. We are very thankful today uh, for all of the federal, the state, and the local officials from the state of New York and the state of Little Rock who are here for this commissioning. This is a historic day for our nation. This is the first time, as you know, in the 242nd year history of the U.S. Navy that a warship has been commissioned alongside its namesake, uh, the former USS Little Rock. Again, I say Congratulations to Commander Peters, the command staff, and the crew. God bless the United States of America, and God bless the USS Little Rock. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mark Stodola. To my U.S. Senator John Bozeman, to Lieutenant uh, Governor Kathleen Hochul, uh, to all of the distinguished guests on the platform, to Secretary Ray Mavis, and particularly to all of you here from Buffalo, I am happy to bring greetings from the citizens of Little Rock. On behalf of the citizens of the city of Little Rock and North Little Rock, I would like to say what an honor it is that the advanced, sophisticated, and agile combat ship located behind me will carry the name Little Rock in defending democracy and freedom throughout the world. Beyond that, though, it is the crew who will man the vessel that bring true honor to our city's name. You come from all walks of life and all areas of our amazing country, united in your dedication to protecting America and all that she stands for. And as you and those who come after you sail, you can be confident in knowing that the thoughts and prayers of the great and gracious people of Little Rock will be traveling with you. A large contingent of our citizens have traveled here to Buffalo today to reinforce that commitment, and there's an even larger group that have gathered in Little Rock where this ceremony is being streamed live to be here with us in spirit. It is a testament of our dedication to you and to the crew. I offer my thanks to Mr. Mo Nalen and the Buffalo Commissioning Committee to Mayor Brown and to the people of Buffalo for all your hard work in hosting these commissioning ceremonies. And I certainly want to thank that dedicated group of people in Little Rock and North Little Rock who have worked on our Little Rock namesake committee and have supported it, including our chairman, Tom Prince, our vice chairman, John Gill and Ron Fuller, as well as our coordinator, Ron Maxwell, and to all the others who have dedicated their time and their resources to making this a success. I know that this ship has the resiliency, the determination, and the tenacity of Little Rock in its hull and in its mission systems. And though I suspect for the enemy, at least, a little less Southern hospitality. Commander Peters and crew, I know you will be back with a vengeance. Please know that a piece of the ship and its crew is in each of us as well. Thank you, and God bless the USS Little Rock, and God bless its crew. Thank you, Mayor Stodola. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Brian Higgins. Greetings to everybody, and uh, thank you to uh, Mayor Brown and 
Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, Senator John Boozman, and uh, Mo Nalen for his leadership on all of this today. We honor our veterans of all conflicts, uh, particularly our World War II veterans. You know, during World War II, it was a very different time. Our allied forces had won the greatest military victory in human history. And our veterans didn't treat it, they didn't do a victory dance, they didn't spike the ball, they didn't high five. They were just grateful that it was over. And they wanted just to be worthy of the peace. The United States created international organizations to keep the world protected from tyranny. We gave Western European countries uh, about $150 billion to rebuild Europe after World War II in their vision, not ours. And we also took care of our own. In 1944, the Servicemen's Readjustment Act, otherwise known as the GI Bill, said to millions of returning veterans that you can go to college, you can buy a home, you can start a business. And it was good for the good that it did, but it also fundamentally transformed the American economy from a manufacturing economy to a knowledge-based economy. And a big part of post-World War II, in the Korean War was NATO. And this ship and its predecessor was the armament to keep the peace. It basically said wherever this flag is flown, that of the United States, from sea to shining sea, we as Americans keep our commitments and we take care of our own. So today is a day to give thanks for many things. I thank you for the opportunity that you give me to represent this community in the United States Congress. We give thanks to the men and women of the American military for their service and their sacrifice only for the people and the nation that they love. And finally, we give thanks to God and nation, a God and nation that makes this day and all of our days possible. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Higgins. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Luke McCollum. Well, good morning. And uh, Secretary Mavis, welcome back to the USS Little Rock. And Admiral Ruffhead, welcome back home. On behalf of the 31st Chief of Naval Operations, I welcome you to this ceremony, and it's a privilege to send personal greetings to the fellow Arkansans that are here and those watching uh, via live stream. A special thanks to uh, Mr. Mo Nayling, Chairman of the USS Little Rock Commissioning. We really like to say thank you to that because we know that took a great effort to pull, pull together, and certainly the Honorable Tom Price, Chairman of the Namesake Committee. As your time and effort certainly bears a lot of fruit today. The crew known as the Little Rockers added three shoreside Little Rockers with Commander Peters at the helm as the crew raced back, raced here to beat the ice clock. Many of you know what that means. What I mean by shoreside Little Rockers is that three members of the crew welcome babies into the world. Well done, Little Rockers. At the core of this ceremony is the actual commissioning. And it's a commendation to the team, the Navy team. And the Navy team is sailor, it's civilians, and the dedicated patriots who banded together to make what is behind us happen. And it's only fitting right here in Buffalo, the city of good neighbors, to be standing here that we put this in, commit, in commission. This commission is the culmination of craftsmanship of shipbuilders and artisans. 
an incredible milestone for the crew, and I'll say for the crew, hard work and the full realization that this day has actually come. Our littoral combat ships are a key component of the fight now and the future. We need our Navy to operate far away as well as at home, and we see examples every day that in this increasingly fast-paced, complex environment, interconnected world, that presence matters, and the USS Little Rock will contribute to that presence. Ships like the Little Rock will operate forward where much of our Navy cannot, in the shallows, in the littorals, and with speed and with lethality. And after today, this ship will head out to her home port at Mayport. And later next year, she will deploy and go in harm's way at the tip of the spear in our challenging environment. In a few moments, we will formally place the ship in commission. And as our sailors, the lifeblood of our Navy, run aboard, her heart will start beating and forever capturing the spirit, toughness, and patriotism of what represents the core of our Navy, our sailors. To Commander Peters and the crew who will take this ship over the horizon to distant corners and to keep our nation safe and secure, we say thank you, fair winds and following seas, and thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. And as a resident myself in the wonderful state of Arkansas over the last 20 years, it's a distinct present and pleasure for myself to be here to introduce a great friend of the military and veterans community. Senator John Bozeman was first elected to the United States Senate in 2010, where he ser currently serves as a member of the Senate Veteran Affairs Committee. Previously, he served the people of the 3rd District of Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator John Bozeman for the great state of Arkansas. Thank you so much, distinguished guests, Janae Bonner, Mayor Stadler, Mayor Brown, Mayor Smith, Navy leaders, the crew of the USS Little Rock and military families, and especially our veterans. Thank you so much for your service and all you represent. I'm proud to be with you. I'll clap to that. I'm, I'm proud to be with all of you to mark this occasion. On behalf of the citizens of Arkansas, it's an honor to have one of the Navy's more versatile warships named after our state's capital, the flagship city of Arkansas. This is an exciting day for the city of, Ar of Little Rock, and it's great so many Arkansans are here to share that, to celebrate the commissioning of the USS Little Rock. This is a very important to the community. I know it's something that citizens across the state are taking great pride in. The USS Little Rock's lo logo features one of the most recognizable images associated with Arkansas, the Razorback. The University of Arkansas football team was given the nickname after the head coach at the time said the team played like a bunch of wild Razorback hogs. I'm confident this crew, known as the War Hogs, will carry on that same work ethic. I'm also confident that the crew members don't already know how to call the hogs. The Arkansans here will volunteer to show you. Now, we're not going to do that today. We can't because you have to have spirit fingers. I think my fingers are about to fall off if we do much of that. It's been more than four decades since the Navy had a ship named after the city of Little Rock. And again, we are thrilled to be changing that now. Today, as has been mentioned, marks the first time in the history of the Navy that a ship is being commissioned alongside her namesake. During its time as a light cruiser and then as a guided missile cruiser, the original USS Little Rock and its crew were vital to defeating growing threats. Thousands of sailors served aboard the USS Little Rock, including former Secretary of Navy Ray Mabus. 
And again, it's so good to have you here. And, and I know in visiting with the Secretary, the, uh, the serving aboard the Little Rock had a profound effect on him, and I know it will on so many others that are about to serve. I'm confident that the crew of the new USS Little Rock will create many fond memories of their own. I've enjoyed following the, the U.S. Little Rock crew on its journeys from training, drills and inspections, the visit to Arkansas, the trip to the Bills game, and stops at VA hospitals. The updates we've seen displayed your dedication and commitment to this ship and its operational capability, as well as to the defense of our nation. It's hard to believe, but it's nearly two and a half years since I attended the christening of this ship in Marinette, Wisconsin. Today is the culmination of years of planning, design and construction. I'm grateful for the men and the women at Fink and Terry Marinette Marine Shipyard and Lockheed Martin who are continuing to ensure our Navy is ready to face today's threats and tomorrow's challenges. The USS Little Rock is a critical component of our Navy sea power. This ship and the strength and resolve of the Warhog crew is the future of the Navy, offering unique capabilities to defend evolving threats around the globe. In order to protect our national security, the Navy has to have the resources that it needs to stay ahead of the threats. We also need the resources to work toward the goal of a 355 ship fleet. Achieving this larger, more capable fleet will take decades to complete, but Congress is making it harder than it needs to be because of the way that we're spending taxpayer dollars. For nearly a decade, Congress has funded the government by passing continuing resolutions, followed later in the year by larger spending packages instead of approving our individual appropriations bills. Funding the government is the basic responsibility of Washington. It's an obligation that my colleagues and I on the Senate Appropriations Committee take very seriously as we craft the appropriations bills, set priorities, and make difficult decisions as to how to spend taxpayer dollars wisely. We owe it to our service members, their families, all Americans. We owe it to the crew of the USS Little Rock that we as Republicans and Democrats, and this is not a partisan issue, this isn't about Democrats and Republicans not agreeing, this is something that we simply have to fix. Admittedly, Little Rock is not one of the places that you think of when you mention the Navy. Cities like Norfolk or San Diego or Pensacola likely come to mind. But Arkansas has a long tradition, a proud tradition, of defending our nation. And now that commitment will continue as the USS Little Rock embarks on upcoming missions. That long history is being preserved in the Arkansas Military Veterans Hall of Fame. I've been honored to participate in the induction ceremony for the last seven years, the seven classes of the Hall of Fame, one of the first inductees was a Navy fighter pilot, Bernard Dunn. He enlisted in the Naval Reserve in 1942 and was commissioned, called to active duty as an aviation cadet and commissioned as an ensign in 1943. He became an ace pilot, earning two distinguished flying crosses and four air medals during his service in the Pacific during World War II. He is also honored at the National Naval air Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. We certainly are very, very proud of him. Many of you have read the book or seen the movie True Grit. It's about a young girl from Yale County, Arkansas, Maddie Ross, who persuades Marshal Rooster Cogburn of Fort Smith, Arkansas, to go after the murder of her father. She, sort of, she sought out Rooster Cogburn because he had true grit. Bernard Dunn of World War II, the people serving on the USS Little Rock have true grit. Willing to do whatever their country asks, 
ordinary people doing extraordinary things. For this, we are so, so very proud. Our state doesn't border an ocean, but now the state capitol will once again have a place on the high seas. This is a tremendous honor of the city of Little Rock, and I know that the ship and its crew will make Arkansas proud. Congratulations, and may God bless you, our country, and the USS Little Rock. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Bozeman. Vice Admiral McCollum, I would be honored if you would place Little Rock in commission. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship Little Rock in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. Thank you, Vice Admiral McCollum. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Little Rock. Oh, it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying over USS Little Rock. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Chief of Navy Personnel to Commander Todd D. Peters, United States Navy. Subject, Bupers Orders Number 0347. When directed by reporting senior, assume duties as commanding officer, pre-commissioning unit Little Rock, for duties in conjunction with fitting out. Upon commissioning of USS Little Rock, report for duty as commanding officer. Vice Admiral McCollum, USS Little Rock is in commission and I am in command. <laughs> Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safe and smooth operation of the ship and her crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored today to have our Buffalo Committee Chairman, Mr. Mo Leilon here to assist in setting our first watch. He will pass our ship's long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant James Cossus of Cassopolis, Michigan. The petty officer of the watch is damage controls, controlman second class, Victor Sanchez of Stockton, California. The messenger of the watch is culinary specialist second class, Jessica Wolanski of Burgesstown, Pennsylvania. And the bosun's mate of the watch is bosun's mate chief, Ian Howes of Brooklyn, New York. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. 
We are delighted to have our sponsor, Ms. Janae Bonner, here with us today. Ms. Bonner christened the ship in Marinette, Wisconsin on July 18, 2015. Janae, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Thank you so much. It's an honor and privilege to be here with you. Now I get to give the great order. Officers and crew of USS Little Rock, man our ship and bring her to life. Oh, no! Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Little Rock salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy. Ready? Two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Captain, USS Little Rock is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Johnston, USS Little Rock is manned and ready and reports for duty.
Vice Admiral McCollum, request mission to break your flag. Break your flag. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Chief of Navy Reserve. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Chief of Navy Reserve. Aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Chief of Navy Reserve is flying over USS Little Rock. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Todd D. Peters, Commanding Officer, United States Ship Little Rock, LCS-9. Little Rock, parade, rest. Distinguished platform participants, honored guests, families, friends, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, to all the current and former Little Rockers, it is our pleasure to have you here with us this morning as we bring the fine name and proud legacy of USS Little Rock back to the fleet, back with a vengeance. Before I get into my remarks, I would ask everyone to take a moment now to take a good look at our ship. She is magnificent. I have been a sailor all my life and I have been fortunate to serve in six different ships. I have loved them all, but none of them more so than this one. Little Rock has everything a sailor could want. She's sleek, she's agile, she's responsive, she's fast, and she's deadly. As a matter of fact, there is only one woman beautiful enough to draw my attention away from this ship. <laughs> my wife of 22 years, Mary Beth, whom I'm honored to have here today. Mary Beth, I love you, and I am smart enough to know I would have never made it here without you. Thank you. No matter how beautiful, capable, or complex a ship is, systems, sensors, and weapons alone do not win battles. The difference between success and failure is the tactical prowess, technical capabilities, and fighting spirit of our sailors. Simply stated, great ships are made great by the sailors who man them. I can assure you Little Rock sailors are truly great. As a matter of fact, they are the very best I have known in more than 27 years in uniform. Each of them have dedicated more than two years training and preparing to man this ship. All of them have worked tirelessly to outfit and prepare her for service. These sailors executed a grueling schedule which managed to compress 100 and 120 work days of training, assessments, and evaluations into 63 calendar days, including Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. On average, they put in 14-hour days, six days a week, while standing duty every third day. They stood topside watches exposed to the elements on seven-degree days in, in, in Wisconsin, where the real field temperature dipped down to negative 10 degrees. Days where it was so cold, pipes froze and burst in our main machinery room. They received, inventoried, and stowed 135 tri-walls of equipment, tools, and supplies, constituting more than 120,000 items. They took on and passed every assessment on the first attempt, some without the benefit of rehearsal or practice, and they are the, uh, the first Atlantic Fleet LCS crew to accept and deliver a ship from the shipyard. They completed the first Atlantic Fleet LCS damage control material assessment and engineering light off assessment, both of which were assessed well above fleet average for our cruiser and destroyer contemporaries. They have been away from their families for the past 138 days and have another 26 days to go before we reach Mayport, where Little Rock will be home ported. None of us will see our families this holiday season. They have done all of this with smiles on their faces, concern for each other, and a glowing affection for our ship, which grows daily. These sailors impress and inspire me every day, and I cannot be more privileged than to serve alongside them. In addition to the sailors you see in uniform here today, I would like to recognize and thank all of our shoreside Little Rockers, the wives, husbands, children, families, and loved ones who inspire, support, and encourage us. Thank you for your love and understanding. Thank you for standing by us these, 100, these past 138 days and for your continued patience in the days and months to come. Although we look forward to return, returning and reuniting with you 26 days from now, our days together will be few as 2018 offers a busy spring and summer filled with underways for combat systems testing and training. As we transition to this next phase of operations, your continued understanding, support, and encouragement will be vital to our success. It is an honor and a privilege to be a Little Rock sailor. 
and we would like to thank and recognize the sailors who served in our namesake Little Rock. We are fortunate enough to have some of them here with us today. We appreciate the proud legacy you have built, and we are humbled to be its inheritors. Rest easy knowing we have the watch. We are also joined by sailors from our USS Little Rock Gold crew, the Scorpions. These sailors have been with, with us and have been invaluable to us for the past four months, augmenting our import watch bills and helping us fight through the challenging schedule I outlined earlier. Thank you for helping us get here. We look forward to a continued partnership as we complete Little Rock's testing and post-shakedown overhaul in preparation for her first deployment. On behalf of both crews who will sail in Little Rock, we would like to thank Commodore Johnston and the staff at Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 2 for your support, guidance, and assistance throughout the stand-up of our crews and the manning of our ship. We would also like to thank all the shipyard workers and craftsmen who built Little Rock. Lockheed Martin Corporation and Fink and Terry Marinette Marine Shipyard have produced a ship second to none. And thank you, we'd like to thank you for devoting your best effort and energy into building us such a fine ship. In addition to the industry team, we would like to thank everyone in the LCS program executive office and supervisor of shipbuilding who not only helped ensure the quality of Little Rock, but also worked tirelessly to ensure every system and piece of equipment was fully operational and ready for use upon delivery. We have been blessed to know and work with two phenomenal commissioning committees in two different cities, each, in, each chaired by an inspired leader, Mr. Tom Prince in our namesake city of Little Rock and Mr. Mo Maurice Nalon here in Buffalo. Gentlemen, we cannot thank you enough for the dedication and determination you have shown over the past 18 months. As a proud service warfare officer, I hope you understand the high regard and esteem intended when I say each of you would have made a fine SWO. On behalf of the entire crew, I would like to thank every member of each committee. The past 10, 10 days have been truly amazing. You have welcomed us to your cities, embraced us as honored guests. None of us was quite prepared for the hospitality, generosity, and graciousness you have shown. In return, we would like to include you as members of our Navy family and welcome you as Little Rockers in your own right. We look forward to continued friendships with both cities and building a relationship which endures even after Little Rock's service has come to an end. To our sponsor, Ms. Janae Bonner, thank you for sharing this week with us and for dedicating your time, energy, and support. It has been a pleasure to get to know you, and we look forward to building a lasting relationship with you. You are always welcome aboard our ship, and we hope you will keep us in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you again for joining us here today as we celebrate USS Little Rock the newest ship in the world's finest Navy. It is our privilege to serve, and it is an honor to serve in such a fine ship with such a distinguished name. On behalf of the officers, chief petty officers and crew, we would like to send a message to the entire world, friend and foe alike. USS Little Rock, call sign Vengeance is back. Ship's company. Attention. Huh. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Glassmeyer will now deliver the benediction. Let us pray. Lord. This has been a phenomenal week for the Little Rockers, for the city of Buffalo, and for our great nation. We humbly ask your blessing upon this crew. We commend this ship, the USS Little Rock, to your care and divine providence. Defend these sailors day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Protect them when they are in harm's way. Watch over their families during times of separation. Preserve them from the perils of the sea and the violence of the enemy. Grant them fair winds and following seas. And bring us all one day to a place of peace. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Glassmar. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our official party.
captain is going to lead. Thank you.